Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 0.90, better than ever, or as I'm calling it, the unnamed series, because I actually can't think what to call this nearly stock series. So if anyone has any ideas of the name, give us a shout, that, that, that'll be great. But before we do any of all that sort of stuff, we need to figure out what we're doing today. Uh, and I think what we're going to do today is spend this science, try and get enough money to upgrade... Uh, this sort of stuff here. No, no, not this sort of stuff here. This this thing here. Um, but you may notice that I have a bit more money than I did last time. That's because I've gone in here and I've taken the Orbit Curbin, um contract. Now, the reason we're doing that is because basically we've beaten all the high altitude ones. And the reason I'm not taking any more is I don't know what vessel I'm going to be putting up into orbit yet. So depending on what the vessel is that I build depends on the second contract that we take. But first, we need to go and spend all this science. Now, I, for one, really think we need um, this, the LV-909. Uh, mainly because once we get up into orbit, or get up out of the atmosphere, it's by far the most efficient way to push us around into orbit. So that, that's definitely one of the things I'm going to do. Also, the landing struts. Nice idea if you're particularly bad at landing like I am. Uh, also, we then have 40 more points to spend. Now, I think actually that means we can do both. We can actually do both. That is awesome. Or, oh no, we can't We can't do that. That's a shame. Oh, look, we're five points short. If only we'd sent Bill up instead of Jeb last uh, last session, eh? No. The, 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 the remorse that I feel over that is, is, is real. Okay, so let's have a look around and see what we've got. Now, these big solid boosters, they're, they're amazing. Um, stability, mainly for the radial decoupler. So let's get both of those. I like the radial decouplers and the, the big boosters. <laughs> I like big boosters. Uh, and yeah, well, that's pretty much all the, the science and stuff we've got to do at the moment. So I think what we're going to do is take this basic idea here. Uh, in fact, let's this basic idea here and try and launch it into orbit. Um, Obviously, we're going to bolt some science on and stuff like that. But I will get back to you when when I have a, an entire vessel. And we'll talk about what the, the second contract will be that we're going to take. All right, so I think this should uh, should do us. I know it looks a little bit small, but let's talk some numbers, shall we? Uh, each one of these solid boosters um, has a thrust rating of 250. I believe that is in kilonewtons, but... Don't take my word on that. I was just a quick, quick search through the wiki told me that. Uh, but these are all. Oh no! Oh no! What have I done now? Ah, uh, breaking stuff. Let me just pop these back on. Uh, so these have all been limited to about twenty percent, give or take, which means they're giving out a thrust to weight ratio each one of about one, which means I'm well overpowered for this, and that's why I've brought it right down low. We also have a. a um, uh, liquid fueled engine inside, mainly for the throttle control and gimbling because we want to be able to turn and shit. <coughs> and at the top here, we have the, the stage that's actually going to get us into orbit. So my plan is fire all this lot straight up for, uh, I don't know, 50 kilometers or so. Uh, and then this unit here should be able to get us into orbit. This is my plan. Uh, I think we're going to take Jebediah because this is a piloting um piloting mission uh the other thing we need to do is like let's save this oh no that's, that was load let's save this and go have a look at the contracts because we need um we we need to make money basically that that is what this space program is all about now we're not using the big solid fuel boosters because i thought they were just a bit a little bit overkill um testing the the, the liquid engine in flight it's quite low down i don't think i'm going to be able to do that uh, the Mark 16, is that the one that goes on top? I can't remember if that's the one that goes on top or not. We'll have to uh, double check about that. It's quite a good speed though. Uh, I think what we might actually end up doing... Uh, this one. Can we do this one? I think we can do this one. Uh, the the LVT45. Uh, yeah, let's take that. I, I believe that is the one that we have um, at the bottom stage. This one, hopefully. The LTV. 45 brilliant sweet so the status is that we're trying to get for this is uh six kilometers going at quite a pace <sighs> that's actually might be a bit too much of a pace we're definitely going to be aiming for the lower bound of that oh see now now that i've gone and done this i realize we've got a bit of a problem but anyway let's just let's just go what, what's the worst that could happen hey what is the worst that could happen a big fiery death for Jeb as soon as I press the space button is the worst that could have happened. But that's all right. It didn't happen. Uh, we're getting on for time acceleration now because there's a lot I want to pack into this episode. And 
well, there's things about this flight I want to talk about. So the first thing that I'd noticed is my, um, my liquid fuel down the middle there was running out far, far too fast compared to my solid fuel around the outside. Makes sense because I turned them down by like down, down to 20%. Uh, the other thing that I had noticed is there was no way within the altitude bracket that I was going to make the speed. Not not at this setup anyway. Uh, that's that's all right though. We'll we'll just do that on another flight at some point. So checking my map now, we've dumped all the solid boosters, and unfortunately my liquid fuel ran out there. Uh, or my first uh, lifting stage liquid fuel ran out there, which was no good. Uh, I knew that was no good at this point in time. I'm like, well. Let's just see how far around the planet we can get because maybe we'll hit the badlands on the other side and get some extra science from there. Unfortunately, it was worse than that. It was worse than we could even possibly imagine. I mean, we're just coming up for the final arc here and I got maybe a quarter of the way around the planet. Yeah, look at that right there. That was terrible. So I decided to just slam myself into the atmosphere side on. I really don't know whether Kerbal Aerodynamics takes that into account or not, but, but there we go, I did it anyway. Uh, and we come down for a safe splashdown, bit of science, Jeb did a nice mission, and we're going to come back with a uh, much bigger rocket, bigger rocket idea. Alright, so uh, Jeb did such a bang up job, this time we're sending Bill out, because, you know, he can use the SAS? No, he can't. But anyway, oh, no, no, we literally can't even send it. So we're going to be flying this by the stick. Are, pe are people people proud of me? I, I, oh, this is just going to go so bad. Anyway, we are in the KSS Size Matters, and we're away. Uh, I, I think we should be all right. As long as I can keep an eye on the direction of flight, we really should be going well. Um, I do kind of regret not ha not putting Jeb in here, actually. Uh, a little bit of SAS would have, have gone amiss. Though maybe fine control... Oh, geez. Oh, oh, it's so twitchy. Um... Yeah, maybe fine controls will help, but I, I, I just tried it and really it didn't. It just meant it was a little bit sluggish. So what we're going to do is just try and keep this pointed upwards. Oh, it's it's actually quite difficult. Um, anyway, let's see let's see this that one there. Uh, are we going to punch any speeds at the right time? Let's let's try if we can get. Oh oh, it is very difficult to to control. Which is a little bit disappointing. I really thought that I'd played this game for long enough now that I could just fly this by hand. And it turns out that I rely on the stabilization system quite a bit. Uh, we've gone up into the, uh, the the accelerated mode now because, well, almost the entirety of my co uh, my commentary for this was, oh, it's not going well. Oh, I keep spinning round. Why can't I keep this straight? Oh, it's spinning again. Help, please help me. Uh, and as you can see on the, the, the screen over there, that is why I didn't have Jeb in my vessel, uh, because I hadn't recovered him from his last uh, mission, which is a little bit confusing. I really did actually think I'd, I'd got, got him in there and Bill just managed to work his way into the pilot seat somehow because Bill is more awesome than Jeb. Turns out that wasn't the, the answer. Right, so what I just did there was a little bit of a, a cheat, or indeed what I just did there was a little bit of a cheat, where I used my time acceleration to attempt to try and stabilise my direction of flight, uh, which worked very shortly, but until I fired up my engines and then the weight imbalance between the mystery goo and the um, parachute that I've got on the side slowly started to spin my rocket out of alignment, which not great, but you know, there we go, that's the way it is. Now, uh, those of you that were paying attention would have noticed that I was literally a few kilometers of periaps out of having an orbit. Uh, I am very, very sad about this, like very sad. Uh, more so about the fact that we're going to splash down in the water because I've already got an awful lot of water science and indeed during this whole sort of program we are likely to get a whole lot of water science because it is the default landing place on Kerbin. If you don't pick a spot, you're probably going to end up in the water. All right, because I'm a bit of a stubborn fool, what we're going to do is we're going to take the size matters and Jebediah out this time and I'm almost certain this can actually make it. Like, we got so, so close to being there with Bill. I reckon if we had a little bit more control... Uh, is everything in the right order? Let's just double check. Yeah. I reckon if we had a little bit more control, we can make it up into a just barely there orbit. And then maybe we'll make it back. Who knows about that? We will have to find out. All right, are we ready? Three, two, one, go. And it's quite a slow takeoff, but that's all right. We're, we're all good. A slow takeoff means you are not, I don't know, burning fuel so quickly. I, mean, I suppose what would have been nice is if there's some way of like 
changing these thrust limits. Oh, can we not change these thrust limiters in flight? How, how incredibly unusual. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah, we can do the liquid fuels in flight, but the solid bo solid boosters have to be done live. That's that's pretty cool. All right, well, I'm just going to accelerate up time a little bit because it's a bit difficult talking to you and trying to think about what I'm doing at the same time. Uh, times three might be pushing it a little hard, but at the same time, I think we're, I think we're doing this all right at the moment. Uh, so to do this contract up here, it's really going to take uh, a specialised vehicle, I think. Uh, we, we always seem to be about halfway there before we leave the uh, leave the bracket that we're after. Uh, which is, is it's okay, you know, as, as I've said on other flights, uh, it's not as if we can't... Oh, we should really start tilting over. It's not as if we can't do it in another flight. Uh, in fact, we will be doing it very much in another flight. Let's just ease back a little bit on my throttle here. Let's see, let's see what we're doing here. Um, oh, wow. Okay, so we're coming up quite high. About 50 kilometers seems like a perfect time for me to start be doing my uh, my 45 degree gravity gravity assist burn turn thing. Yeah, you know, this, this maneuver that we're doing right here. And I reckon somewhere like there. I mean, oh, we're losing speed. We want to be gaining speed. I throw it down just a little bit too much there that's right I, I don't think it's going to have too much of a negative impact on me uh the, the main thing i need to do is just get this forward velocity going some um i kind of want to at least be hitting uh, a thousand meters per second by the time we break atmosphere uh, and i think actually we're just going to push this up as high as we can here Mm, maybe a little too too close to the uh, to the to the ground. There we go. Six, Sixty kilometers, sixty-two. Waiting for our fuel to die. There we go. It's just happened. Give it a pop. Woo! And then we burn at something like this. Now, hopefully, we're not going too far through the atmosphere. Indeed, we we are skimming the top of the atmosphere, and that's fine. We we hit about a thousand meters per second here. That was good. Um, though this really wants to be going up a bit more what what, what do we want to hit about 75 yeah well that that's where i want to hit anyway so we're gonna we're gonna hit 70 uh and then just carry on pushing across to the horizon hopefully we're not burning through too much fuel we want we want at least a little bit left for coming back because you know we do definitely want to come back uh, there's no way we're going to get that down and recovered that's fine that's fine we can do that um well, yeah, the, the the space program can take the dent in in the the funds, I suppose. Hopefully, it sounded quite quite painful actually taking a dent in the funds. Uh, okay, so we have the, uh, the the wonderful sounds of the vacuum. Um, I, don't, I don't know why space sounds like music, but there we go. Space does indeed sound like music. And now we're just gonna throttle for all we're worth. We may or may not be able to make it. I I kind of hope we do. Um, let's just have a look and see what's going on. Uh, it's a shame that we can't see. There we go. Our liquid fuel readout on this this particular screen. But there we go. We've got everything set up. We're just waiting for the periaps to appear out the side here. Uh, well, there there it is. Brilliant. That's 40, 40 odd kilometres. How far do you reckon we've got to go out? Quite a ways. What I'm going to do is just wait until we get round to there because, you know, we don't have much fuel. We, do, we really don't have much fuel. It'd be nice to save as much as possible. Okay, so about here, we just kind of... Can we can we, can we get this hit there? Is that is that a thing? Do we... No, we're not allowed to do that. Okay. Um, I was trying to... You know where you right-click on the periaps and it gives you the display? There we go! Orbit! Oh, guys, yes! This is what we're after. This is what it's all about. Right, let's get over here. Okay, the, the main thing to do now is to um, get the science. Oh, and I tell you what I haven't done. I haven't um, upgraded my astronaut complex. Oh, have we been up? Well, that's just not useful. Why in space near curve? Do we not have an orbital thing? Uh, I don't think I've got the the fuel to get us up into a higher orbit. It's like, what, 250 kilometers, something like that? Yeah, I definitely do not. So what we're going to try and do is put this down next to the Kerbal Space Center because, you know... That, that's the that's where we like to be. So we're going to burn around an orbit. Oh, it's slow. Oh, it's so very slow. And of course, when I mean but when I say burn around an orbit, I mean we're going to time accelerate our way around the orbit because uh, we can't burn our way around the orbit. That would do lead us to all sorts of weird trajectories that will put us off in weird weird angles. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is wait until we're over the top of said desert here. Yeah, yeah, this is what we want. Uh, and then we're going to slow ourselves down and try and bring ourselves down over there. Um, 
Of course, this is all dependent on the amount of fuel we've got left. We've got a little bit, is, is the, uh, the, the word here. Um, once again, okay, so I think what we're going to be doing is getting void installed or, or something like that. Something that gives us, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, something that gives us orbital statistics on a readout up here. Um, because I would like to know what my periaps is. It would be very useful to know what my very apps is actually. Okay, I think about there we're gonna stop so that we have just a little bit of fuel just a little bit of fuel to assist our landing if need be. Cause who knows? It, I mean this could go terribly wrong here. Um I'm I'm hoping that it won't. Obviously. Um oh I tell you one thing I I have forgotten to do. Let's see what the crew report says. Pow, nothing there. That's fine. So just had to double check so we got up into orbit so we've done all the space science before we got up into orbit which uh, is a little bit annoying i didn't put any oh i don't have any um solar panels to put down that's you know it's not ideal it's not it's not the worst though uh and now the real question is are we going to fly right over the top of the space center i mean there it is right there you see that little pixel that's flashing white and dark um if you don't turn your resolution up guys come on it's, 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 i am running at minimum resolution here if you can't see that you must be running at a terrible one um we are indeed going to fly far far too over that that's mm, annoying but not the end of the world that's the end of the world over there look <laughs> i joke um right so we really are flying quite high at the moment um yeah look look how far out my apple apps is though we are going to be splashing down once again in the well i believe this to be called the kerblantic um whether this is actually called the kerblantic or not i have no idea answers on a postcard please send it to my p.o box number um because you know i've got a p.o box if anybody wants to know what it is just uh check out my youtube page i suppose okay here we go i, I don't actually have one it's just jokes so we're coming down a relatively slow speed um we're just going to find out how slow we're going to be for touchdown i'm hoping something like ooh, i don't know three meters per second would be nice uh we're coming down to under three kilometers two kilometers one well not under one we're coming to there now we're under one okay how, how low should we pop our parachutes i'm reckoning somewhere around 100 meters there look at that perfect timing and now we've just got to wait for the final bit to touch down ever so gently any second now any second there we go and there we go guys we got into orbit and back again a kerbal's tail Woo! thank you very much for joining me for this adventure this once round in orbit i will see you next time when we can do more stuff uh i would tell you what but more, more likely it's all gonna go wrong